perceive me differently, if you see what I mean? People actually know I exist, which is, yeah, most of them didn't before. 2008 was the busiest year for the Lug Radio presenters. Not only was there a two-day live event in the UK to organise, but in response to the clamouring fans in the US, Lug Radio was going to America. I'm sitting here at the moment expecting all this to just go poof and vanish in a puff of smoke and I'm going to wake up in my study and think, oh, it was all a dream. I just feel kind of lucky to be able to do it, really, because there's not many other, uh, not many other things you can do in life where somebody else gets to pay for you to take a nice trip around the world somewhere to go <laughs> show off on a stage in front of people especially with a limited amount of ability at actually doing that. That's called hysteria in the UK. Nuts. Like through the entire trip we've been saying, how is it that four idiots from Wolverhampton have managed to, to persuade one of the biggest companies in the world to give us some money and i for us to come out here and to be flown out. The four of us sitting about talking shit about things from time to time, and now we've been flown to America. This is just this whole weird head fuck. On the other hand, I mean, John, I will tell you, whether you're getting to admit it on camera or not is a different question, but we've always thought, wouldn't it be great? Look Radio Live, when we started doing that and you know, did that in Wolverhampton, the idea of doing it in the US was always a, a dream, but never really ever expected it to happen. Well, we always said we'd love to do a Lug Radio Live, we'd love to do a live event, and then we did it. And then after that, we started saying, wouldn't it be great to go to America? I mean, jokingly at first. We started talking about this uh, some considerable time ago, as you can imagine, and they, uh, the Google people who've been helping us out, um, they suggested various venues, and they mentioned the Metreon, and we said, well, okay, it sounds quite cool, and then Jono came out here uh, a couple of months ago and took some pictures, and then he brought the pictures back and showed it to us, and we thought, fucking hell, it's a barn, oh my god, it's enormous, but it's a really cool venue, out the back, um, just behind the camera, in fact, you've got a beautiful balcony, and then there's a view of the whole of San Francisco, and it's just fantastic. The day before the event, the presenters arrive at the venue. Nerves are beginning to show. <laughs> it's um. I would say it's bigger than I expected it. Jolly, it, it, it's space is being massive, but yeah, it's a bit different when you see it in real life. That's all I'm saying. What What do you think? It's fucking massive. But it's not. It's actually not as wide as I thought it would be. But it's way longer. Because I saw, when I saw it the last time, I was thinking maybe it's going to be smaller than I than I actually anticipated. But it's just as massive as I remembered. We best have some big ex exhibition stands. So I don't actually have some kind of feel dude about that part. Like there's only enough people. You feel like there's exhibitors and all that. It's only fine in terms of ex as, as the place feeling full. If the place feeling full, then they've been kind of a buzz about it and all that kind of stuff. I don't have. A You're feeling that. doomed about the live show, aren't you? I'm feeling. I'm just feeling doomed. Yeah. They're not going to get it. They're just not going to get it. That doesn't bother me. At I, I suspect it. That's the thing. We just can sit in the stage and act like tits. No problem. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's effortless. Be, and it'll be dead silent and we'll die on our ass. Nah, it's not going to happen. That's the bit of what I feel good for that. It's not going to happen. Although this is probably going to be replayed back when it <laughs> does happen. <laughs> okay. 
Nerves are understandable when organising an event as big as this, but how difficult was it to organise? In all honesty, it's been an endless siege of misery. Nightmare. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> I've, never, I've never experienced so much frickin' stress in my life as in the last two months. I mean, it's... The way I work, I mean... The way we, we divide the workload into, you know, to, to, to the four of us. Um, and I'm the kind of person that will sit down and identify what I need to do over a, peri a time period and then, and then work in it. But because we haven't known how it's going to work here and because I had to deal with the publicity side of things, I had no idea, no way of quantifying whether my, that my work on this was being effective. We've had quite a few people say, oh wow, you're coming to the US, it's absolutely fantastic. And then we said, okay, it's going to be at the Metreon in San Francisco. And they're like, oh that's shit, I live in New York. And originally I said, well why is that a problem, you know, this is... This is your country. And they said, it's 3,000 miles away, man. <laughs> you know, you live closer to Turkey than I live to San Francisco. And you kind of forget about that. Americans have geography, whereas the UK has history. It's been long, it's been hard, but it's definitely worth it. It's a really nice place. So despite the nerves, once the exhibitors and equipment begin to arrive and the volunteer crew prepare the goodie bags, the presenters start to feel more confident. How are you feeling at this point? Less doomed than I was. There's a lot of stuff in this room now. It's coming together. Yeah. Just need some exhibitors, some speakers and some people. But yeah. It's a, cool, it's a cool state. Very cool state. There's lots of people who seem to know what they're doing. Yeah, which is not, tr not traditionally the link with the Look Radio Live. Um, I mean, it looked cavernous before, but now we've got the tables kind of, kind of being set up and stuff. It's beginning to kind of look a bit kind of more realistic. <laughs> it looks like it, it's going to be quite full. I suspect. Yeah. yeah. It's still a bit the, I mean, the level of development of the room now, is, to me, should have been like this. It should have been like this about noon. So I'm kind of. With the venue prepared, the Lug Radio team head off for a few drinks. The following morning, the presenters and crew arrive at the Metrion and after some final adjustments, the venue is open to visitors. And after that, it's pretty much business as usual. Do different things like dragging and dropping or something. Okay. But does this event feel any different to the UK ones? I think it feels very similar to the UK. Very similar, you know. I think it's... Uh, um, I think it's got all the right ingredients. It's different in the sense that there's a different crowd here. You know, in the UK, there's a very strong UK community. And uh, and they're, when they're present at the UK event, there's, there's, there's a lot of in-jokes and stuff like that there between them. But here it's different. We've got a new audience to kind of do Lug Radio Live too. We're, <laughs> I don't want to say things like we're really protective of the Lug Radio Live brand, but we do try really hard to make sure that it doesn't feel like a corporate conference. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, we're in a rather posh venue and so on, but we've still got signs that we've mocked up. We've still got the three different stages. Um, we've still got the same uh, kind of feel to the things. The, the bags that you get in on the way in are still called nut sacks. <laughs> still gonna have ACDC playing. It's still gonna have a bloke in a thong. It's still gonna have a bloke in a thong, absolutely. It, I think it's kind of been split about 50-50. There are some people who've who listen to the show and yeah have really got it, are really here and they're really enthusiastic to be here and they they're kind of like wow, brilliant, excellent, love the show and they're really into it. Obviously the sen the American sense of humour and perhaps their reaction is slightly different. Uh, they see things in a different way, kind of. I mean, <laughs> there was a, a moment when we did the gonga thong, and it was in interesting seeing that translated into, a, from, into an American perspective. Obviously, Aaron Bockover was in wow. the thong, and he's doing it <laughs> as an American, through an American audience. And I, I think that kind of thing.